Welcome to Model Steam Engines Top Tip Time Part 9. This series is almost full of top tips. How to do certain jobs as quickly and efficiently as possible and in the best way that I can. In the previous episode I was renovating a model beam engine and in this one, which is called a Stuart Models Beam Engine Rebuild, I'm doing just that. When I look back at most of the videos that I've made over the years, they are full of really useful tips, so once again here are a few of them. That's why I decided to make this series, and in this episode I'm showing how badly this engine was put together in the first place. I will be featuring clips from this video in future, because there really are a lot of top tips in this series. Some are obvious and some are less so. Pardon the pun, but you could say this is the tip of the iceberg, with more to come. I bought the Stuart Beam engine in with a collection of other engines fairly recently, and I sold everything else, but this one was incomplete and it wasn't perfect. Well, it was far from perfect, so I think it's now time to rebuild it. The paintwork on the column has cracked up badly, and this is not because it's very old cracked paint, probably due to the fact that too much paint was applied in one coat. A closer look at the bearings shows that these are not split bearings, they're actually bushes in split plumber blocks, and this is quite a good way of doing it on a small engine. So that means the bearings are not adjustable when they're worn, you just replace the bushes. But it's only a small engine, it's not a seriously big heavy duty one. The bearing plumber blocks are made from steel, and they're actually fabricated, they're bolted together. And in this clip there's a bit of a miscalculation. The bolts are too close to the plumber block itself, and the solution to this is that someone's put the bolts in the lathe and rounded the edges. Often during the fitting of parts onto a model steam plant or steam engine, the bolts can be too close to the parts, and it's impossible to get a socket in there to remove the bolt. When I rebuild this engine I'm going to standardise the fixtures, and I'm actually going to make the ones for the plumber blocks 2BA but with smaller heads. And that way I'll be able to use a socket to reassemble the engine. And in this clip I'm showing using a socket to disassemble the engine, and that's not a problem because in this case the bolts are not too close to the metal part of the column. When I look at this column I notice that the paint underneath the Mammod green is Stuart Turner green or Stuart Models green, whichever way you want to look at it. It's a darker green. It's normally actually I think Brunswick green, sometimes olive drab, but anyway it's a dark green. Three of these are bolts, and the fourth one round the back is a stud with a nut on it. So I think what's been happening here is that whoever assembled this engine did not have enough fixings of the right size, hence the anomalies with the types of bolts used. Time to remove the pipework. This is fairly straightforward. I loosened it with a spanner and then just spun the whole assembly off. This came off quite easily without event, and in a similar way I removed the drain cock pipes and the exhaust pipe. If you look at the exhaust pipe manifold, and that's the part closest to the wood, it's got a very small hole down the centre. I think I'll modify the flange and make it take a quarter inch pipe instead. And that way I can use PM Research elbows as I normally do to pipe away the exhaust to the condenser. This socket is slightly bigger than it needs to be, which is useful because I can move it at an angle, and it makes it easier to withdraw the bolt. Here's the same thing at the other side. First one, and then I'll lean the socket slightly to remove the second one. And here is the valve linkage from the engine, which is about to be put into the green box with all the other components. And now without further ado, I can remove the cylinder. It was a bit stubborn though, could use a socket on part of it, and then on the other part I had to use a screwdriver. And I wonder what's going on with the mounting plate for the cylinder itself. These are supposed to be countersunk bolts, but instead there's a hotchpotch of different fixings, some with lots of washers on, because the cast iron base plate is already countersunk to take countersunk bolts, so one can only presume that as I said earlier, the person who put this engine together didn't have enough suitable fixings at hand to complete the job. Usually when I go to Blackgate's engineering, I always buy extra nuts and bolts, just to keep my stock level fairly high so that I don't run out of nuts and bolts at the wrong time. I certainly would not do the job this way. I'm wondering what the piston fits like. It slides up and down in the cylinder a little bit too easily, and yes, there's a bit of side play too. 
Sometimes these type of engines have piston rings made from cast iron. Alternatively, they can be fitted with a silicone O-ring as a piston ring, and sometimes even soft packings, which is just graphited yarn. There is nothing at all wrong with soft packings for pistons in steam engine cylinders, but as a general rule, if you're using soft packings, the piston has to be a good fit in the cylinder. This thing on the steam chest is really a governor assembly, but nobody's fitted a governor to it. This is a tin of standard thinner. When you're using this stuff, it's probably a good idea to read the instructions. They're fairly scary. I'd just like to mention that in the new workshop, I am in a very well ventilated area. And in this clip, I'm pouring a generous amount of cellulose thinners, also known as lacquer thinner in the USA, into a polythene tub. And now, I'm adding all the painted parts and agitating the cellulose thinners with a paintbrush. And the paint is starting to dissolve already. So you've seen me painting, you've seen me painting fast and slow, and you've seen me leaving the paint to dry. So this is a new one. This is paint being dissolved by cellulose thinners at the moment at high speed. And now for the purists in real time. There's nothing more I can do. I'm just going to leave the cellulose thinners to do its stuff and dissolve the paint, and I'll come back tomorrow to finish it. After a walk down the garden, which currently still resembles the Battle of the Somme, I went in the house, and on the doormat behind the door, I found an envelope which contained this. It was an invoice for £17.82, complete with a drawing for the reversing gear for the 7A. And as I only phoned Stuart Models yesterday afternoon, I was really pleased with this. So tomorrow, I can continue with the 7A reversing gear. But that's it for now. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website. Click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you will find it very easy to find other videos that you may like to watch.